in view of all these oppressions, this undervaluing of our labor, taking from us our right to choice and our industrial avocations, infliction of pecuniary dependence, shutting us from the trades and the learned professions, wresting from us our legal rights, denying us political equality, denying us free speech. We say that these and other usurpations demand our speedy remonstrance. Who would be free themselves must strike the blow. No matter if the yoke we wear is soft and cushioned, it is nevertheless a yoke. No matter if the chain is fastened by those we love, it is nevertheless a chain. Let us arise then in all the majesty of renewed womanhood and say, we must be free. Abby Price, Hopedale, Massachusetts. I hope you do not feel that I speak to you in anger. I did not rise to make a speech. My life has been my speech. Bloody feet, sisters, have worn smooth the path by which you have come hither. The signs are encouraging. The time is opportune. Come then to this convention. It is your duty, if you are worthy of your age and country. Give the help of your best thought to separate the light from the darkness. Wisely give the protection of your name and the benefit of your effort to the great work of settling the principles, devising the method, and achieving the success of this high and holy moment. Paulina Wright Davis. We long for the time to come when a finished education shall be every woman's birthright, when the respect of the other sex shall be her legitimate inheritance, when the woman of any rank will be able to obtain a livelihood for herself or her children, when she shall no longer find herself a tool or a plaything, we would willingly listen to her voice in the religious assembly. Caroline Wells Healy Dahl. Hi, I'm Ranger Chuck Arning with the National Park Service here in the John H. Chafee Blackstone River Valley National Heritage Corridor. And those voices you heard earlier were the voices of the first participants of the first National Women's Rights Convention here in Worcester, Massachusetts in 1850. Those words were filled with anger and frustration, yet also hope and certainly determination, for they portrayed a group of women who were on the cutting edge of the ultimate reform, total emancipation.